What is up, everybody? My name is Nick, joined once again by my co-host, Matt, and special guest, Connor, Fast Money Labs. Appreciate you both joining me today to go over Wild Card Weekend once again. We got a good game this time. It's the Vikings and the Giants. Vikings are currently minus three at home, and the over-unders at 48 and a half. I want to start off with our resident Vikings expert, Connor. I know you're a big fan. Oh, get out of here, man. Let's let's. So, you know, I've, I've tried to put all biases aside, right? I'm a Giants fan, but let's break this down. Um, so just like I like to do, let's start with the market signal. So the the money and bets are pretty split on this. Um, so the, the spread is pretty much unchanged since the open at around minus three. It's dropped at, at certain points to minus two and a half, but it's been bought back up to three, uh, which indicates there are some sharp bettors hitting the Vikings. Um, whereas I, I, I'm getting a sense the public is leaning towards the Giants. Um, and then on the total, it drifted up by one point from the open. So not drastic, but you know it could be play as a shootout in Minnesota. Um, now, just some a fun fact about the Vikings. Uh, so with the DVOA stats that we would like to reference, which adjusts for the you know quality of defense they're facing and whatnot, the Vikings ranked as the 27th uh, overall DVOA this year. So um, that's at the ninth lowest ever, ever recorded for a playoff team. Um, and it's the second worst ever recorded for a team with 11 wins. So what does this tell us? It indicates they've been lucky to an extent. And that boils down to one possession games. 11 of their games came down to one possession, uh, you know, where it was a six or seven point game. And they were 11 and 0 in those games. So that's lucky, right? Uh, and it's possible they're due to break. But on the flip side, the Giants aren't the best playoff team either they also had a you know ranked in the bottom 11 of dvoa um but with that said they've dealt with a lot of injuries and a lot of players are coming back especially on defense this week um so they'll get their number one cornerback uh back adoree jackson and the big question for me is can they stop um justin jefferson right he totally went off against them and but i think the silver lining in this for the giants is a week or two after the Packers obviously put out the blueprint. How do you stop Justin Jefferson? Right. Um, so it's possible they'll be able to slow him down. And what I'm most interested in guys is can, will the Vikings go back to just running the ball? Cause the giants are actually weakest on defense defending the run. Um, but Dalvin cook hasn't, you know, they haven't been leaning on, on him as much in the last couple of games. And I actually see that as their best opportunity to win this game is if they just pound the ball against the giants. Um, and last but not least, the Giants blitz guys more than any team in the league. And Kirk Cousins is, you know, he's not the best against the blitz. So I expect the Giants to dial up a lot of pressure, try to force Kirk Cousins to make plays. And if, you know, I think it'll be super close. Uh, I obviously lean Giants money line, but I'm not placing any bets. I don't want my biases to get in the way. Um, so what are you guys thinking? Yeah, let me uh, add on to that real quick. So a couple things. Obviously, uh, minus three points. Uh, for points differential on the season. So that's just to add on a couple points you've made. Uh, As far as them playing before, obviously the Vikings won 27 to 24. A guy you didn't see a lot because Justin Jefferson did well uh, was TJ Hawkinson as well. I mean, he really took it. He had 13 receptions that game for 109 yards and two touchdowns. So that's not something that we can just skip over um, to be honest. I mean, it's just, that's crazy. 13 receptions is for a tight end even though it is TJ Hawkinson is just insane. Everything I want to do, I want to bet, you know, the value and bet the giants and and bet against the frauds, but it is a little concerning and scary um, because it's just staying at minus three. I feel like the public's going to be hammering the giants. Uh, And then obviously you said before, we have some sharp money or signs of sharp money going towards the Vikings. It's a scary game. Um, it might be a game I also sit out because I'm biased. I, I just I hate Kirk. I hate both these teams really. I hate Kirk Cousins. I hate the Giants. I hate everything about it. But I just want to add a couple things. Matt, get in there. You know, clear it up. Yeah, for I'm also a Giants fan. Um, I'm not really. I will be honest though. I'm like I'm more of a diehard Devils fan and Mets fan than I am a Giants fan just because of the years of torment that they've given me since post Eli. Um, but you know. Listen, I'm allowed to complain about that. I've had. Well, tell me know, about torment, okay? <laughs> I've had so much torment on every other sports team I, I watch, but uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like it's like, do you bet the Giants at the value, 
And I wouldn't be surprised if they rolled or if they got rolled. But it's like, if you don't bet it and the Giants win, you're like, why didn't I bet that? Like, that was yeah. so, so <laughs> obvious. It's just like, I know like it's always easier in hindsight, but it's just like one of those things. It's like, I might have to bet it and say, you know, I'm getting plus money on statistically the worst team against the worst team in the playoffs. Like I'm literally, I know there's on the road and the Vikings are in a weird spot where like everyone knows they're frauds. Like they have phones, they have, they have computers, they have the internet. Everyone knows what they're saying about them. Is it a, Oh, let's prove them wrong. But at the same time, like they just gotten so lucky, so lucky. These one score games that the clock's got to strike midnight at one point. Again, I'm still torn. I don't really have a Giants bias. If anything, I predicted their win total to be under this season. Uh, I'm usually pretty, uh, you know, anti-Giants having any sort of value, but I just can't deny it. And the fact that that they just played, like the fact that the Vikings won the first time a few weeks ago makes me want to bet the Giants this time. And if it went the other way around and the Giants stole it, I would probably lean more of the Vikings to kind of get their revenge here. But it was a good game. I may just stay away from the total and just – play the kicker prop we all know i'm gonna drop later on anyway so we can get into that another day but if there's gonna be yards and points scored uh you know the highest point total on the board at uh, 48 it may go over it may stay under that but either way i think it's gonna have over 40 points um you could find some good props or some good stuff there i may stay away from a total maybe find a good live spot for me but yeah this has been not helpful at all everyone's gonna be saying the same thing that we are uh, me, that's basically it for me. Let me play devil's advocate real quick because everybody's mm-hmm. talking about, you know, Vikings are frauds. So, sure, you can definitely make that case. But no one handed them the, those wins. You know, they still <clears> went out and, and won those close games, all of them. Uh, no one, you know, no one said, hey, you know, it's the Vikings. They're, we're only, they're only up by one score. They have to win. No our, said- our playoffs prime time. Like no matter yeah. what, our playoffs prime time. Because if if every game is prime time, they play at four thirty. The fourth quarter may be prime time, <laughs> and we can oh. see a late a late cover. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Right, everyone knows Kirk Cousins is trash in prime time. Like, and and the if you really break that down and lift the hood on it, right? What 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 is it about prime time that causes Kirk Cousins to struggle? Is it just the late night aspect of it, or is it the pressure that, only, that yeah. is associated with that, you know, spot? And uh, I, I personally, you know, I, I'm interested to find out, but I don't, I don't see Kirk Cousins playing well. But again, you know, I'm, I, I'm not going to bet the Giants because as soon as I bet the Giants, they're going to lose. Um, yeah. And it, what's also an interesting aspect about this one, guys, is both teams are really good at coming from behind. Like the, the Vikings obviously had the historic comeback this year. The Giants also had a ton of second half comebacks. Mm-hmm. So either way, the game goes in the first half. I could see it, you know, playing tight till the end. So that's what intrigues me most. Yeah. Uh, well, I appreciate you putting your bias aside to, you know, give some facts, or at least some <laughs> information. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's, it's one of those games where I probably end up bet- betting the Giants like Matt brought up before. Just so I don't, you know, if I look stupid, I look stupid. But I'd I'm rather not- bet the Giants and lose than bet the Vikings and lose. Is basically what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's basically at where least I'm at. take the points. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Especially if you know we were talking about these close games, the Vikings could still win by one or two. <laughs> yeah. One or two. Yeah. Graham Gano is going to miss an extra point and they're going to lose. Oh, there he goes. Your kicker prop, guys. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Hopefully, you learned something um other than matt and you know connor being giant giants fans let's get this um, money and let's get this money